I ask that you please stand while we invite retired Marine veteran Pete Jones, commander of the American Legion Post 72, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. Ah. Please be seated. <clears throat> Good morning. I am Chief Steve Mortarelli. I would like to welcome and thank everyone for attending this memorial service. We also appreciate all of our co-workers for attending and residents that will watch from home for taking the time to remember everyone that was lost and continuing to demonstrate our care and support for the families and loved ones. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge our community representatives and responders in attendance. Representative Alice Pice, Hurry, Megan Roboto, select board members, Chair Claire Offrank, uh, Marjorie Fryman, Tom Elfelder, Beth Sullivan Woods, Lisa Only, Executive Director Megan Jopp, Police Chief Scott Whittemore, Father Laughlin, Rabbi Bleich, Retired Marine Veteran Commander Pete Jones, <clears throat> and of course, the members from the Wellesley Fire Department, Police Department, as well as their honor guides. So thank you. Today we gather to pay our respects to all of those individuals who lost their lives on September 11th, 2001. We also gather to pay our respects to the loved ones that they left behind. On that day, the world witnessed incredible acts of evil, but it also witnessed incredible acts of courage, compassion, and the goodness of mankind. The news of this terrible event spread around the world and we were all touched by what occurred. At this time, I'd like to welcome Father Jim Laughlin to lead us in prayer. Like many people, I distinctly remember where I was 23 years ago. It was a gorgeous, sunny Tuesday, much like today, with puffy clouds framing the blue sky. I had just returned from graduate studies in Rome and was in my office as the workday began. One of our assistants rushed into my office and said, Father, turn on the radio. A plane had just crashed into the World Trade Center in New York. I listened to the minute-by-minute -minute description. Soon came the second plane, then a third breaching the Pentagon, pe Pentagon. Still another crash landing in a Pennsylvania field. As more of the story emerged, we felt as Americans a collective sense of loss, of dread. Any sense of well-being and security vanished in an instant. Would life ever be the same again? But for some, the loss was much more personal. And it is these we remember today. The thousands of innocent people who lost their lives and their loved ones who suffered such an unspeakable and devastating loss. We remember particularly those in our own community who suffered such devastation. We remember the firefighters and other rescue personnel who rushed into harm's way sometimes at the cost of their own lives. We remember all of these, we honor them, and we hold them in our hearts with love. God of all consolation, give comfort to those who grieve and are in pain. Send the healing rays of your love upon them, and may we be instruments of that love and consolation. Dispel the darkness of hatred violence and intolerance. And may we all live our lives in such a way that will bring healing and solidarity to our troubled world. Amen.
Thank you, Father. At this time, I would like to welcome Assistant Chief Nat Brady to deliver the firefighter's prayer. When I am called to duty, wherever flames may rage, give me the strength to save a life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it is too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout, and quickly and efficiently to put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and give the best in me, to guard my every neighbor and to protect his property. And if according to God's will, I must answer death's call, bless with your protecting hand, my family one and all. Amen. Lieutenant Jeff Renzella to deliver the police officer prayer. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here on this important day of remembrance. I'm going to read the police officer's prayer. Lord, I ask for courage. Courage to face and conquer my own fears. Courage to take me where others will not go. I ask for strength, strength of body to protect others and strength of spirit to lead others. I ask for dedication, dedication to do my job, to do it well. Dedication to community to keep it safe. Give me, Lord, concern for others who trust me and compassion for those who need me. And please, Lord, through it all, be at my side. I would like to invite Wellesley retired Marine veteran Pete Jones to the podium. Good morning. Thank you all for coming here. In the September 11th ceremony, 23 years after so many brave men and women perished by the hands of terrorists on American soil. Deborah Bergenheim, an American patriot whose brother was killed in the attack on the Pentagon, wrote eloquently in the American Legion magazine. And I quote, the flag spoke for us when we read the words, it was our comfort and our rally cry, America, America, God shed his grace on thee. And so we put them everywhere. We put flags on office buildings. We put flags on storefronts, on cars, on children's bikes. The flag was sewn anew onto uniforms of major league baseball players and emergency room nurses. It greeted us and lifted our spirits when we, when, we, <coughs> when we needed it the most, appearing in, in improbable places like a highway overpass. That faded flag, that dirty faded flag on I-95 pierces my heart. Where have all the flags of September 11th gone? Unquote. On, summer, on September 11th, 2001, in an unforgivable horrific attack, terrorists robbed America of more than 3,000 lives. Quite simply, September 11th, 2001, wounded our nation in a way we had not known since the shock of Pearl Harbor. And bringing down the World Trade Center, damaging the Pentagon, and downing an airliner in a Pennsylvania field, this ranks as the most devastating attack on our nation's history. We vowed we would never forget 
but have we? Domestic issues, wars against Israel, Ukraine, have our attention, and for good reason. But I fear September 11th is fading in our memories, now relegated to a single paragraph in the newspaper stories, an occasional reference in television. Hundreds of families still suffering gaping holes in their lives. A mother, a father, a brother, a child is no longer among them. And among these loved ones, more than 300 emergency service workers also perished in these attacks. Their survivors live with the pain of September 11th daily. Those of us who are not directly affected by the attacks are at disadvantage with ground zero not being outside our front door and the Pentagon not being visible from our window. The anger we felt that day is perhaps starting to fade. Although bin Laden and several other terrorist leaders are history, the enemies who hatched the September 11th plot hope to spawn even more terror domestically and abroad. They are counting on our complacency. Convinced that we are a nation of selfish materialists, they do not think we have resolve. They do not cower. They do not think that we will triumph over them. Let it be said on the day of remembrance that we will win. Even as we gather to remember those lost in the attacks, America's military is tracking down terrorists and securing and protecting liberty at home and abroad. In memory of September 11th, as it is fresh in our minds, anyone, it's our men and our women that are in uniform that remember it the most along with the elected officials and our intelligence agencies. They are tasked with preventing another tragedy of the magnitude on American soil. Today, our armed forces patrol the many countries threatened by terrorists, missiles, bullets, landmines, and they serve under heat and cold conditions, risking their lives for world peace. They are dismantling piece by piece the terror network that threatens the peace and security worldwide. We are indebted to them for their willingness to protect our country, our freedoms that we enjoy. God bless our American forces. God bless those 9-11 families and those family members who gave their lives on September 11, 2001. And God bless America. Thank you, Pete. <clears throat> At this time, I would welcome Representative Alice Pice. Thank you very much, um, Chief Mortarelli. Um, I very much appreciate your continuing this tradition of remembrance. Um, it has been, I think, a very um, uh, wonderful experience for the residents of the town of Wellesley to every year know that we will not forget not only the sacrifice of the first responders and the victims at the World Trade Center, some of whom, as you know, were residents of Wellesley, but this is also a reminder of the fact that we can never, as uh, Mr. Jones said, be complacent. Um, we always need to remember to support our first responders, our members of the military, and I think I have great confidence that the residents of this community uh, will always do so. And again, I just want to thank you for continuing this tradition to remind everyone of the fact that we uh, can never forget. So thank you very much, Chief. Thank you, Representative Bush. I would like to invite our select board chair, Colette Offronk, to the podium to say a few words. Good morning. As Chief said, I am Colette Offrank, and I'm currently serving as the chair of the select board. And in that capacity, I am honored to be here today on this most solemn of occasions as we remember the events of 9-11 and the lives lost that day. 
We are grateful to Chief Mortarelli and the Wellesley Fire Department for organizing this event every year, giving us as a community, as a town, a chance to pause and reflect, a chance to remember those we loved and lost, and to give thanks to those who responded to the call for help. Those of us here today, aged 30 or over, remember well the horrific events of 9-11 and how they unfolded. We all remember a cloud simply being drawn over our lives that day. Many of us knew someone touched by this tragedy, and we were all moved by the stories we heard of lost loved ones. To the families and friends of those we loved and lost, you have our eternal sympathy and our steadfast support. We all heard the stories of the first responders, people who are trained to help in an emergency and to run to help those in need. The firefighters, the police, the emergency medical and first responders and rescue workers. We will never forget their bravery, their courage, and their willingness to do their job in the most horrific of situations. Global events cannot and do not stand in the way of the work you do, whether it's terrorism or a pandemic. Similarly, we are buffeted by the currents of social events, including the mental health crisis or social needs that present themselves on a daily basis to our first responders. So much of your work is caring for our community on a daily basis, and that is not easy work. It can take a toll. I want to share a message today to all of our first responders. We see you. We see you all. We are here to support you and back you up. As a town, we have a support system and resources at your disposal. You have our eternal gratitude, our respect, and our support for the work you do day in and day out, putting your safety on the line for our protection, responding to what is inevitably some of the most challenging moments of people's lives and helping them through it. We remember and we thank you. Thank you, Colette. <clears throat> We'd like to invite up Rabbi Blaise for final prayer. Thank you, Chief, for putting this together and for inviting me up here. Today we pay tribute to those who lost their lives on that horrific day 23 years ago a day that will live in infamy. Special tribute must be paid, as others have said, to the fire and police personnel who entered the towers after the attack, keenly aware of the danger of putting the lives of others before their own. Since that day, the US and allies are actively waging a war around the world to fight terror wherever it may be. We ask for Almighty God's blessing to protect and preserve the lives of our men and women in the armed forces. Beyond that, what can we citizens do? Those of us that are not in the military can make a huge difference too. We are witnessing an epic battle between the forces of darkness and the forces of light. It is incumbent upon each and every one of us to do everything in our power to increase in acts of goodness and kindness. Every such act unleashes unlimited rays of light that spread throughout the world, brightening our future. Every good deed possesses infinite energy to create a positive change in the world. It might sound simplistic, but rest assured that it's absolutely so. Our actions are our weapons, and the more we do and the better we act, the mightier the impact. Ose shalom bim romav, uya se shalom aleinu, v'alkal Yisrael v'yemru amen. May it be your will, almighty God, 
that the collective good deeds of all people of good faith come together and tip the global scale and usher in a truly utopian era of universal peace and tranquility for all. Amen. As I've done here over the last uh, maybe 23 years, um, as we welcome in the Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, I take this opportunity to uh, do a blast on the shofar with which we pray to, as we had mentioned, to welcome in a world of unity, of peace, collective for all. Rabbi Blaise. <clears throat> the firefighter bell signal of 5555 is a tradition of the last alarm. This signals to call our lost brothers and sisters home. Today, we will ring that signal to honor all of those lives that were lost during the tragic events of September 11th, 2001. We especially remember our Wellesley residents that were lost and express our continued support to the families and friends of Neely Casey, Edmund Glazer, Patrick Quigley, and John Cahill. Firefighter Birchler, please signal the alarm. Freeze, eh? Out. Again, thank you for taking the time to attend the September 11th ceremony, to remember all those that were lost as well as their families. This concludes our ceremony. I would like to thank you for attending. Please help yourself to some coffee and refreshments. Thank you. All's your honor, All right.